Good morning. Welcome to Life for Five with Pastor Ben. I'm glad you're joining us today. Uh, today I'm in a different location. We have Winkle today, which is uh, the local gathering of the LCMS pastors, and we gather in Farmington, so I'm in Farmington today. But I'm, I'm waiting for my ride because I'm getting my our van work done that takes care of my family. We have an oil change and a transmission change. And so I'm waiting for my shuttle to take me up to Zion Lutheran Church here at Malloy Honda. But we're going to spend some time in God's Word before I make my trek up there. And we spend more time in God's Word, which is just kind of an exciting thing to do. Um, so uh, I'm sorry for the shadow and the background noise from from the main road going through Farmington, but uh, we'll still be able to spend time in God's Word in this unique way today. So good morning, Carol and Diana and Terry and June. Glad you're joining us today. Let's make our beginning in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it from the rising of the sun to its setting. The name of the Lord is to be praised. Amen. If you pull out the YouVersion Bible app, our verse of the day is from Ephesians chapter 3, verse 20. Now to him who is able to do far more abundantly than all that we ask or think, according to the power at work within us. Now this is, this is an intriguing text. So what we're going to talk about first is, is what Paul is doing and then why he is saying this. Okay, so there's two parts to this. What he is saying and why he's saying it. Uh, this is a, a doxology. It's a part of a doxology. If you read more portions of Ephesians chapter 3, it's a doxology. So you, you know the doxology that we sing in church. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. That. But what is a doxology? The word in Greek, doxa, literally means glory, uh, splendor, radiance. And so it is an acclamation of those things to God. So in scripture, there are, there are four different patterns for a doxology. One is the object of praise as God, of God. Then you have the noun, the noun for, for glory or honor or power, which we actually had this last uh, Sunday in the reading from Revelation. The third one is this eternity formula, which we have in that doxology that we uh, sing, uh, 805 in our hymnal. And then the fourth one it serves as an amen. Now, when you say amen, it, you're actually saying Hebrew or, or, or Greek, if you, if you didn't know that. So there's a little side note. Some people are adamant that you're supposed to say amen. Other people are adamant you're supposed to say amen. They're both right. One is taking hints from the Hebrew. One is taking hints from the Greek. But amen literally means this is true. So it's a statement that this is true. So that's what Paul is saying. Now the question is why? Why is he saying this? And he's, he's wanting us to think on the concept that we often put God in a box. We confine him to what we think he's capable of doing. And here we have now to God, now praising God, who by the way, is able to do a lot more than you even ask him to do according to the power that he's placed within us. And this, this is extremely powerful then for us to consider that God is capable of doing more than we even ask him to do, which is why we're so bold to pray. Lord, if it is your will, heal this person. <laughs> I can't even consider how you would heal this person, but you're capable of doing it. So Lord, if it's your will, do it. Lord, if it is your will, bring about a, a joyful return of the gospel to this outpost of your church here at St. Paul's. All, all these kinds of things that then end up shaping our prayer life and our thoughts. And, and so we, we go to God because he's this unfailing eternal fountain. And the more, the more he pours out, 
the more it bubbles up. It, it's never ending. Whereas with most fountains or a cup of coffee, there, there comes an end. But with God, there, there isn't one. And this then changes the way that we go about our prayer, go about our faith life. I encourage you to go back and read chapter 3 of Ephesians again and see how, how Paul is using this doxology for the purpose of pulling God out of the box that we've placed him in to shape our faith and what we do. Let us pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you that you are bigger than the box that we place you in in our minds. We, we now see that you are unfailing and unending fountain of your grace and mercy, able to do things far beyond even our imagination. Help us to live in a faith that trusts that you are able to do far beyond what we can think of and that we would share this unending grace with all who would be willing to hear it. We pray this in your son's name, Jesus Christ. Amen. Well, have a wonderful day. I look forward to seeing you again soon tomorrow. We probably won't be at Moy Honda in Farmington, uh, but I, I'm excited to hear about how God is, is shaping your thinking to move to action in this world. Have a wonderful day in Christ. We'll see you soon.